This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Chris Musk and Derek Hewitt with me. Thanks for talking to us today about Paddlefest 2023. Well, thank you very much thank for having you. us. Now, Chris, you are the co-chair of the uh, Paddlefest. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what's happening on that day and when. Sure. So it's, it's going to be taking place on uh, Saturday the 17th of uh, June. And uh, we're going to have uh, activities going right from noon till five o'clock, a little bit of a break in between. And then we're, we're going to ask people to come back to uh, take part in or to watch uh, something we're going to be doing in the evening for the second year in a row. We're having a night paddle. Uh, it's going to be called Moon Shadow Paddle this year. And a uh, new, new twist, we have uh, some people who are going to be in a canoe who are singers and they're going to be... Uh, singing some traditional voyager type songs to, to add something to the night battle so it should be interesting to see that uh, we have um, entertainment uh, as well um, first of all i guess i want to say the paddle fest it started back in uh, 2016. Uh, we did miss a couple of years due to the pandemic but uh, we've been back now for a couple more years and uh, the, the focus of the event is to uh, celebrate the the heritage and the attractions of having the Rideau Canal right here in our backyard, a World Heritage River. And uh, so we're celebrating the, uh, the heritage and the culture of the river, as well as uh, offering some entertainment in the form of the uh, Voyager canoe races, which are quite exciting to watch. These are very large canoes with a crew of uh, more than 10 people each. And it's just a friendly series of races that we have at Lower Reach. This is all taking place, of course, at Lower Reach Park. And we are going to have, uh, as well as the, uh, the canoe races, there's also uh, cultural exhibits, educational exhibits about the Rideau Canal. And also there's going to be uh, musical entertainment and plays starting at noon and going till five o'clock. We're going to be kicking things off with a couple of uh, short vignettes written specifically for Paddlefest uh, on the uh, history of the building of the canoe. Excellent. It's a, it's a wonderful day. It's been going on, you say, since 2016. And uh, it, it's a wonderful day just to get outside, uh, get some fresh air, get some sunshine. But my goodness, you, you have fun and you learn about the heritage of our Rideau Canal and our heritage in, in general, too. And that's, Derek, where you're going to come in, too. You're going to be there doing some artwork. What kind of artwork do you do? Uh, what I'll be doing and uh, giving a demonstration of is called tufting. Uh, what it is, it's uh, it originates from the Denny of the Northwest Arctic, and it was the art of tying uh, small uh, pieces of hair, uh, traditionally then in, on clothing. Uh, we do it on uh, basically velvet background now, and it's become uh, more of a uh, artwork, uh, scenic artwork rather than just uh, pose. It's a dying art form, so. I learned it uh, from a friend of mine who was stationed up north in Fort McPherson, and uh, he learned it from Mary Firth. She was the former band chief there. Uh, so what he did was he came back and asked me to learn how to do it. He knew I could draw. So we've developed it now into a scenic uh, type of artwork uh, where uh, basically the main part of it is to get out and show it to people, but we donate the majority to uh, different charities. In the past 24 years, I've donated uh, over $700,000 worth to, to do various charities. So uh, by developing it into this scenic work, what we do is try and stick to the traditional scenes, whether that be, uh, say, the dog teams, ice fishing, or uh, just generally with different animals in uh, and different stages sort of thing. Uh, so the whole point of going to different events and everything is to introduce it to the public because the majority of people have never seen what a tufting is. And just to give you an idea, this ear is sewn on. So all I do is you have the uh, yeah. moose hair becomes the stem of the flower. And the caribou hair, of course, is the petals. And then in the center is just dyed caribou hair. Wow. So most people have never heard or seen this. So it's a lot of uh, TV sports sewing all the hair on, of course. So I'll be giving a demonstration of that uh, just to show people how it's done. So how long would it take you to do uh, like a, a piece that you just showed us? How long would that take you to do? 
Surprisingly enough, this one doesn't take that long compared to others. I can do this one in a day, but uh, I've done ones that have taken over a month to do. Uh, the biggest one I ever did was a uh, uh, 32 by 36 of uh, the Inu jumping the ice pans. And uh, it uh, took me a little over a month to do, and they went uh, to auction in Newfoundland where they were building a, uh, a, a youth home. So. Wow. Now you say you're using moose hair and caribou hair. Is that because of the different colors or is that because of different textures? It, well, it's more uh, toward the traditional. I've tried some other hair just uh, for people that have requested it. But generally, I stick to moose and caribou because that's what they were traditionally done with. Oh, okay. So the uh, moose hair is usually done for the scenic, like doing the mountains or doing the stems on the flowers or for doing a sleigh in a dog sled. But uh, the caribou usually forms the uh, actual uh, animal or the person or the fish, the water, whatever I'm doing. So, oh, And then that uh, has to all be sewn on uh, until I have a big enough patch to shape it down. So I'm literally curving the hair. Wow, wow. And you're going to be there on June 17th to do a demonstration to show everybody as well too. So that's awesome. That's awesome. We've yes. got uh, Max uh, Finkelstein just joined us as well, too. Thanks, Max, for being able to join us. Hi, Kathy. Hi, hi. You're going to be joining us. We're, we just got started. Uh, we're, Chris was just telling us about Paddle Fest, and Derek was telling us about an exhibit that he's putting on. Max, you're going to be there. You are, I, I've got to make sure I say this right, you are Canada's canoe man. Like, who better to have at P Paddle Fest than you? <laughs> Well, okay, I don't say that, but some other people do. Oh, I Googled you last night. That's what they're saying. <laughs> so what are you going to be doing at Paddle Fest? Uh, so we're going to be doing uh, stuff with big canoes, really, really big canoes, like canoes that are 10 meters long. So we'll have races, which are quite exciting. Uh, we'll have canoe tug of wars, which is uh, hard. Let me just explain that. So you get one really big canoe and about 12 people, six face one way, six face the other way, and then somebody blows a whistle or says go, and everybody paddles like crazy for 30 seconds, and we'll see which way the canoe goes. Oh, wow. I was trying to figure out how are you going to tie two canoes together, but that's it. that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. That's and then we'll do a, a moonlight paddle, and we're calling it the moon shadow paddle. So it'll be big canoes and small canoes and anything that floats pretty well, any, any non-motorized craft qualifies, um, lighted with candles or other lights at the ends. And it's just really, uh, should be very beautiful to the tunes. Of, I really, so, I really uh, enjoyed that last year. I was out taking some pictures of the night paddle as well too. And yeah. people had it, solar lights. They had all sorts of different ways to be able to light their boats. You started at Lower Reach Park and you went up to uh, the canal and back yeah. again. And we'll try and make it a little bit more of a dance this year. So a little <laughs> more coordination with the canoes following each other and flowing curves. Excellent, excellent. So you've been involved with Paddle Fest for how long? Well, since it <clears throat> began, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably about 2016. Excellent, excellent. And I, you know, that we were talking, uh, you're gonna, there's going to be some uh, competitions. People get together, sure. some of their workplaces, some of their friends, some uh, families, sure. that sort of thing. And there's races that go on. So teams of how many get in a boat, Max? So we're looking at teams of 10 people in these big canoes. Excellent. And uh, they're 200 meter races, just straight sprints. And um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty intense. It is. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And usually, I, I, I can't even guesstimate, uh, Chris, maybe how many teams do you usually get out? Well, that varies. Um, we, we've, had, we've had, what do you, what would you say, Max? Maybe eight, eight teams? Something yeah, like usually that? we get about eight teams out. And yeah. we do it on a, you know, sort of like a hockey tournament ladder. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody gets a couple of races and, uh, and we end up with a winner and the winner gets a, a ceremonial paddle. That's right. Well, we're used to hockey right now, so it's in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is wonderful. Uh, Chris, maybe, you, again, you can tell uh, folks about the day, the time. Do you have to register to get in the, on a team? Um, yes, you have to register with Rio <clears throat> Round to, to uh, register your team. Okay, okay. So, uh, okay, so check the website. <laughs> check the website. Check the website. Or but. The 
And, yeah. and there's uh, so many people down there bright and early in the morning too, if you want to come down and learn more, if you, if you want to do it on the day of. But uh, registering ahead of time, it, it, well, usually when you have to get 10 people, you have to do a little bit of planning ahead. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. It hasn't worked just grabbing people off the street, although we've tried that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to get a team, that's for sure, that's for sure. But Sometimes uh, we've had to uh, say, well, how would you like to be on a team? We just need one more person. You know? That's right, that's right, because there's a lot of people that come down just to watch, too, and I bet you they would love to be involved, you know, they didn't have uh, a team of 10. So, yeah, there's a lot of people I'm sure that would uh, be participating just in the event, would love to be involved in getting out there on the team sort of thing, too, so... That's a great way to get involved too. So again, it's on June seventeenth. Uh, it's from. Uh, is it what? What time does it start at, Chris? The the plays start at noon. At noon, okay. And the racing starts at one. Excellent, excellent. And it's not and just. We also have we have music, we have dancers, and uh, and we have the vignettes. So there's a variety of entertainment that goes on from noon until five. And and, yep. and like you had said earlier too, there's an educational element to it, but it's uh, a lot about having fun and having a great time learning. Yeah, well, we got some great a... exhibitors there, like Derek, and uh, you know the uh, Brockville Aquatarium and the Museum of Nature. Quite quite a good. So yes, it's a it's a learning experience or a learning opportunity to learn about our river. That's right. And what on, our, on its shores. <laughs> There's also going to be a special focus this year on uh, things that can be done to fight climate change. And there'll be some exhibits focusing on that. Excellent, excellent. Now, Chris, do you need volunteers? Do you need some help that day? Well, uh, we, we, could, we would certainly be uh, grateful for any help we could get, yes. Excellent, excellent. How do people get a hold of you? Um, well, we have a, a Facebook page. Uh, they can uh, get some information there, Rito Cottle Fest. Excellent, excellent. Now, is there a committee? Like, I know you're the co-chair, so how big is your committee, Chris? Well, we've we've only got about uh, half a dozen. Okay. Um, it's, it's a small, small group. Small and mighty. <laughs> Best way to get things done. That's right, that's right, that's right. Well, we look forward to it again, too. Uh, you've been doing this since 2016, and we look forward to it. We hope we have good weather. It's, it's We were saying earlier, Chris, you got to bring your sunscreen in the daytime. you got to bring your bug spray at night, right, Max? <laughs> that's right, yes. Yes, we've had paddle fests on, like, the rainiest day ever in August, and that was the first one. <laughs> so we moved it to June. Hopefully we won't get any tornadoes or windstorms or uh, torrential rains. That's right. That's right. Well, we have an outdoor event. It's the, the risk you take, right? Yes. Cross your fingers. Say a prayer. <laughs> well, I thank you for everything you do uh, putting Paddle Fest together. We look forward to it again this year. We've got Chris Must. You're the co-chair of Paddle Fest 2023. We've got Derek Hewitt. You're going to be one of the uh, exhibitors. You're going to be showing people. Uh, you're a local artist, you're going to show people how to do tufting. And Max Finkelstein, you're going to be back and you're going to be talking about uh, how to paddle a boat and, and get out there and enjoy our river system. Yeah, we'll be doing big tours in the big canoes too, so you can just go for a ride up. That's right, too. Region. Those tours are free, by the way. Yeah. And they're free. Excellent. Excellent. I, last year, I heard so much uh, about people going for these rides in the big boats, just to up to uh, the, through the canal system and, and that sort of thing, too. Local, right here in Smith Falls. And so many people, we drive over the bridge every day. We haven't actually gone through the lock system, and it's just a, a great experience. So you'll be able It to is. We're, we're very lucky in Smith Falls and this whole area. The Rideau Canal is, is a treasure. Absolutely, you know, it is. It's a treasure. It, absolutely it is. We're very lucky to have a, a river going right through our town. So thank you very much for, for uh, spreading the word about it, to teaching us about it. It's an educational day, but we're going to have a great, uh, great fun and have uh, a lot of fun on our river. So thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen, today. Thank great you very much. See you at Paddle Fest. Yep, you will. <laughs> okay.